So I am Sandeep Talwar. Uh, thank you everyone for taking time to join in and hope all of you are vaccinated, planning to get vaccinated shortly because this is definitely going to help making all the journeys international possible. Uh, most of the countries are expecting that and the US also expects it when you're returning from the various international countries. So a little bit about me is that I have been traveling since I've been an infant, uh, you know, two years old and traveled practically to every part of the globe, except to the Antarctic and the Arctic. Maybe that's still on my bucket list to do. Uh, I'm sure most of you love to travel, have traveled, uh, whether it's within the United States or internationally, you know, to different parts of the globe. And it's always fun, uh, look at different architectures, meet different people, learn different cultures, the food, uh, the living styles and things like that. And if you reflect back, that's exactly what we in America are actually enjoying because this is where the melting pot is where people from all over the globe are coming in with, you know, different uh, styles of food, uh, maybe their own architecture and things like that, and then blending it seamlessly over here. So the American traveler is uh, one of the travelers that like to travel, do a lot of things, but in a very short uh, time frame. So I'm going to take you a little trip into the UAE and Sri Lanka. Uh, so the UAE is actually the Emirates, which is the seven Emirates that are formed. And they're neighboring with Oman. They're in the Middle East. And this has become, Dubai has become the modern man-made uh, city that's over there. Uh, but the Emirates, still many other parts are still living the old uh, historical age, you know, uh, that they are still in and still blend into the old and new, uh, both historically and culturally. So Dubai is more of your modern city, but yet you do get to see the old Dubai. And this is uh, pretty much what you're looking at. And then Sri Lanka is an ancient island just south of India, uh, which has been colonized uh, you know, over time by the British, by the Dutch, uh, and they've got some history of Indian settlers coming in. So as I go along this particular trip, I will show you, and most of these pictures, about 90, 95% are personally my pictures. Uh, the other 10 or 5% are that from the Tourism Bureau. And taking you on this journey along with me and hope to see you on one of our trips. So we're doing this coffee and tea. Uh, UAE is famous for its coffee. And while we are aware of the different coffees that we get over here, the lattes, the espressos and things like that, uh, in the Middle East is basically Robusta and Arabica. Arabica being more of a lighter version of the coffee with the Robusta being a stronger version. And the way the Arabs normally have their coffee is either dark black in really small cups uh, straight off. And with that, they may have cardamom in that when they're brewing the coffee. Now, once they've finished the coffee, then to sweeten their mouth, they will have a date or two. So yeah, dates are also very famous in the Middle East. So that's their coffee drinking habit, a little small cup of black coffee along with some dates, and you can have it with or without the cardamom brewed in it. So we're going to take you to discover the road that's a little less travel. You're looking at 11 day trip, you know, of Dubai, Abu Dhabi, which is a sister city or a neighboring Emirates to Dubai. And then into Sri Lanka, which is Colombo, Mineria, a local national park, 
uh, Sirigia, Dambula, and Kandy, uh, which all are part of Sri Lanka from the west to the east into uh, a little southern part and then back into Colombo kind of thing. Uh, you've got various highlights that's there. You've got the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building uh, that's there in uh, Dubai. And uh, in, uh, Colum in Sri Lanka, the Sigiriya rock is the most famous or the temple of tooth relic of the Buddha. So to take you to Dubai, uh, basically we talk about the ancient nights and desert skies. Here you will find a complete desert that's there once you go away from the main Dubai, a man-made uh, city that's there. And, the, and on the left-hand side, you will see a little picture where we say coffee and kebab. So again, coffee being a very integral part, but kebabs also, which are basically skewed on iron skewers, which actually look like flat swords, uh, that's there. Uh, various meats uh, that are used and marinated in different spices. Uh, and the softness depends on how the barbecue is done on this. This is a little scene that we have. So when you're doing some coffee tasting with us, we actually take you into the desert. You're just kind of sitting down on the sand dunes, sipping this coffee, you know, along with some dates. Yes, we do give you a bottle of water just in case you're feeling thirsty for water and enjoying that sunset. It's beautiful landscaping, you know, chit-chatting with friends uh, that's there making new friends in the group or being with family and friends that are part of that group. And that's basically how we, you know, enjoy this coffee during sunset time in the desert, uh, the way the old Arabs uh, used to do that. Sandy, the what kind of snack is that? I saw the snack next to a cup. So that's a date. date. Oh, God. yes, that's the date. And on the right-hand side is actually a very unique phenomenon picture that we happen to take by mistake kind of thing, okay? So this is actually a drone shot, but this is a sandstorm that we were stuck in uh, during that time and the roads and everything were closed and then you did have wind that was still blowing and you can see the road that's there that's heading into Dubai city. And this we were driving from Abu Dhabi into Dubai. And our friend decided to walk out of the car and walk onto the sand. And we decided to take a picture using a drone, uh, drone effect basically. So the vehicles do drive as you can see on both sides of the road. So you will see tire marks but it was one of those very, very rare phenomenons that we got stuck in the sandstorm. So here is, of course, uh, the couple on the left, one wondering is what, what is this guy trying to do in terms of taking a selfie shot? Is he really going to get the shot of what the girl on the right is looking at? So the girl on the right and the and the couple on the left are actually right next to each other, two different windows. This is on top of the Burj Khalifa. And that is a scene that they get to see from the top, basically. And the Burj Khalifa is the tallest building today in the world. Wow. Now, here are some shots that I have taken on the left-hand side is a day shot right from the top of Burj Khalifa. And below is a little pond and the little black pipes that you see is the fountains that come up in the night, uh, like the Bellagio fountains. On the right hand side, you see this guy standing on top of Burj Khalifa and enjoying the lights of the entire Dubai city by night. Guess what? I got Silicon Valley into Dubai actually. So this shot is of the Apple store, which is one of their landmark stores other than the one in San Francisco and New York. Dubai is one of the landmark stores and this is the Apple store. Now the people that you see standing over there, from there, 
you've got two nice views. One, if you look upwards to the sky, then you can see the tallest building, which is the Burj Khalifa. And then if you look down, then you see the little picture on the right and top, that's your fountain that plays along with the music. And that's basically what you get to see. It's like the Bellagio dancing fountain. The other picture in between is the Apple store inside with the large screen. And this is of course an old picture. So you see the old iPhone uh, that's shown on that screen. It's a semicircle kind of a store, you know, that opens up both inside the mall and people can stand outside. Now, again, in the picture that you see, these are tall wooden cane doors that open and close if there is a, stand, a sandstorm that's there. And then the right hand bottom is where you have the police, the Dubai police, you know, taking care of the traffic or helping anyone that needs any kind of assistance that's there. We then from there pretty much drive into Abu Dhabi, like I said, which is the neighboring Emirates that's there. Uh, and the reason I say indulge in the unexpected, so the mosque that you see is, is built or constructed by and for Sheikh Zayed, uh, who was the ruler of Abu Dhabi. <clears throat> this grand mosque is actually an idea that they got from the Taj Mahal, and it's kind of built and based off of that. Now, Abu Dhabi is a neighboring city uh, to Dubai, and the Expo 2020 that was supposed to happen is gonna be happening this year between October uh, 2021 to March 2022. And the expo is kind of in the middle of both Dubai and Abu Dhabi, that's there. And on the left-hand side, you see what is called as Karak Chai, uh, that's there. Now Karak Chai is actually strong tea. And this is already pre created and done, which means you've got your tea, you've got your spices, you've got your sugar and you have your milk and it gets to a boil and then it's filtered out and poured into these uh, cups. And it is a stronger version of the tea. So you can have the lighter versions and the strong versions that's there. So that is Abu Dhabi. Now also in Abu Dhabi, you do have the Ferrari world. So which means if someone does want to drive a Ferrari or enjoy a Ferrari ride, uh, this is probably the best place to do that. This is the inside of the mosque. So I was fortunate enough to go at a time which was just before sunset and all the way into the night. So I spent a good couple of hours uh, admiring the architecture from the inside also. Uh, on the right hand bottom, you will see uh, it's right at that twilight zone during sunset time that is there. The right hand middle picture, uh, you will see a lady with a scarf on the head. So if any women that are going there must be covered and they do provide the scarf uh, as needed, okay? And uh, you're free to move about any part of the mosque. And during the prayer time, you cannot go into the main prayer hall. Uh, but other than that, you can pretty much freely roam around any portion of the mosque. Uh, no questions asked, enjoy the nice architecture, relax, you know, sit by this little pond uh, that's there, or just, you know, roam around. We do have what we call it as the desert safari, so this is more, if you see, it's a sand dunes on the right-hand side, I'm sorry, on the, on the picture on the left-hand side, you'll see a rare Toyota RAV4 on the right-hand side, it's a Hummer. These are drivers that are experienced that go through the sand driving at speeds, uh, kind of a roller coaster ride. And trust me, it is fun. Uh, they've got full control of it they know what they're doing and it's a fun ride to enjoy uh, you know, while you're sitting. 
Uh, I do have a video clip also, not this time over here, but I do have a video clip that literally takes the whole video motion of that uh, that's there. And then after this is when we go back to that first picture that I showed you was the sunset coffee along with the date. So this is a little coffee shop that you can see <clears throat> that's built in over there uh, in Abu Dhabi or Dubai. And what you do notice, if you see on the left-hand side picture, uh, the lady that is looking down on those coffee cups, those are the actual cups that you drink from. And it got me wondering, is those look like the Chinese teacups? And the question comes is how similar is the drinking habit? Only thing is that it's two different drinks. One is tea, which the Chinese are very fond of. And here it is coffee, which the Arabs are very fond of. But there is still that similarity of, you know, the, the whole process of enjoying the tea or coffee, the making style, the pouring from a kettle into these cups. On the right hand side, you can see all the variations of your coffee grinders that's there from ancient times. Uh, they don't have any of the modern electrical ones, but you know they've got it up to the 70s and 80s that's there. So there's a whole variation of these coffee grinders that's available. So before I move on to Sri Lanka, does anyone have any questions or any comments or want to ask anything or say anything? So I noticed the coffee cup is really small. So do they only give you a small serving and very strong? Uh, so yes, it's a single serving at the same time. And there is a way of shaking the coffee cup to say that you don't want any more. If not, it'll keep getting refilled. So Sandy, question, um, each of these coffee, um, coffee shop trip, how much do we expect to spend? For example, Starbucks, we spend about four or $5 on a latte. <laughs> so the, these, are, these are part of the trip itself. We take uh -huh. to the coffee shop, so you're not really right. spending anything. But yeah, if you go independently, you're looking anywhere from a low $1 up to $5, depending on the type of coffee that you have. Got it, okay. So, so do you actually have something like coffee tasting? Like because some other places you have wine tasting. And so do you get a coffee tasting? Yes. Till you decide to stop tasting the coffee, you know, till you say no to it, uh, the answer is yes, coffee tasting. And then you eat the date after each cup of coffee just to sweeten and freshen the mouth. And you get the different flavors, like I said, from the Robusta, which is the stronger version, to the Arabica, which is the lighter version. Okay, I'm gonna just move on to Sri Lanka now. So Sri Lanka is, again, a place where you can discover history and culture. Like I said, they were ruled by the British, by the Dutch, at some stage. And there's a lot of Indian migrants uh, that are there in uh, Sri Lanka. And it's got a lot of history, a lot of culture. Uh, they're primarily a Buddhist nation, uh, and but they do have other religions that follow in also side by side uh, in harmony that's there. They do have a lot of national parks for the wildlife that you can see over there with elephants being the strongest uh, go-to animal uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's a little small island, laid back uh, lifestyle. Uh, a lot of beaches because it's an island, so it's pretty much got beaches all over uh, around the whole country. It's got nice mountain tops, which give, get you into the cooler weather. Uh, but again, it's a very laid back kind of atmosphere. 
So this is a view from the hotel uh, that we have, one of the hotels that we stay in on the left-hand side that you can see, and that's the sunset that you can see. So literally you're on the beach and you can walk into the uh, Indian Ocean, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, into the Arabian Sea. Uh, this is the Arabian Sea location and enjoy the sunset either from the hotel or walk into the beach, you know, wet yourself into the sea water, uh, any which way you can do that. Uh, it's a lot of fun just relaxing by the pool also. And there's enough uh, food, wine, drinks to sit down around and enjoy. On the right-hand side, the middle picture, you'll see something that's very, very different and very, very unique. So this is an experience that I have never done before. And we were just sitting around at the hotel and I'm like, okay, let's go do something else. We went on this boat into the lagoon and we just decided to have breakfast right in the middle of the lagoon. So this also can be arranged for our trips. Uh, you know, of course, we make it during special occasions that's there. You could do a breakfast and you can do a lunch. Uh, no dinner or no any, nothing after sunset kind of thing. It has to be during the daytime. Uh, down below on the right-hand side, you'll see a monkey. You can feed monkeys uh, with bananas. So we do carry bananas on the boat. Uh, while you're on this uh, trip, you do get to see a lot of birds and you get to see a lot of monkeys. So we do stop close to different uh, small little uh, uh, places uh, that's there and you can throw the bananas into these uh, prepared uh, kind of baskets that's there and you can watch the monkeys come grab peel it and eat it so it's a fun thing to see and fun thing to do uh, like I said you can enjoy breakfast or just have a meeting and maybe if someone enjoys uh, wine during lunch uh, we can arrange that also into Dambula, which is up into uh, the top mountains that's there. This is the Sigiriya rock. Uh, this is a, a tourism taken picture by drone. This is actually a fort that's there. And this is more like a watchtower uh, for the kingdom for them to watch. Now, the people that are fit enough can actually climb this rock all the way up to the top. And usually, depending on the time of the day, uh, we suggest an early morning sunrise climb it would take you about uh, 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on your speed and how, and how many rest stops you plan to do during the climb. Uh, but as the day progresses, it does become very hot uh, to make that climb and we suggest not to do it, you know, during the mid afternoon kind of thing. So if someone does want to take that climb right to the top to explore the views, uh, you know, the entire area from the top, it is beautiful. That's basically the suggestion that you want to do. Here you'll see a couple of pictures that I've taken, you know, on the left is the Buddha, the sitting Buddha that's there in the center is the stupa of the golden temple uh, that's there. And on the right hand side, uh, this is the vendor that's there outside the temple that creates this kind of artwork of the Buddha. Uh, and of course it's available for sale over there. That's there. So these are some of the tourists that we have managed in the past. As you can see uh, the Sigiriya rock in the background and I'm not sure if you can see this picture clearly, but the lady on the right thinks that she can probably just pick it up and take it with her. You know, so yes, we do try and do these trick photo uh, pictures for you. Uh, this is more of a social media kind of thing. And the right hand bottom is the Sigria rock from the bottom uh, side of it. The next, like I said, elephants is, you know, what Sri Lanka is famous for. Uh, I managed to click one on the left-hand side, that of a baby elephant. And 
while I was there, it just suddenly started raining so hard. And then I captured the mother and the child uh, during that hard rain. On the right hand side, uh, there's this elephant. Again, it's a little video clip that I had actually done. Uh, it's kind of the elephants do a kind of a dance uh, with their trunk while they're actually eating uh, the grass. So they pick the grass up, they move their leg and they beat it to dry it out a little bit and then they eat it up. So it's kind of a little nice dance that you can watch. Now, mind you, this elephant on the right hand side was about, I would say, maybe about 25 to 30 feet away from uh, our vehicle. So that's how close you can get up to wildlife in uh, Sri Lanka. This is candy and we talk about it as the on the other side. The reason we say this, so this is the temple of tooth relic of the Buddha. So this is a very sacred temple in Sri Lanka. This chamber where the Buddha is there is opened and closed two times a day only and only during the prayer time. So if you do want to see it, you must be there during the prayer time and when the door opens off the chamber to actually view it. Uh, other times when the prayer is not happening, you cannot view the inside of this room while you can still view the rest of the temple and get the feel of it. But this temple, uh, this room is only opened during the two prayer times. One is usually in the morning and one is in the afternoon kind of thing. So we normally ask the guests if they do want to see this, then we time the trip to the temple accordingly. And then you are spending a little longer time because we try and take you in early so that you get a nice viewing place uh, to stand before the rest of the crowd uh, starts coming in. We then take you to a little spice village on the left-hand side uh, the person is peeling off and making cinnamon sticks from the larger uh, branches that's there. And we'll roll it up and put it in. Uh, and that's basically, you know, the spice village that we can take you into. Uh, again, on the right hand side, uh, you know, photography is pretty good because you do get to see a lot of sceneries, landscape, animals, temples, you know, and the common people. I've specifically taken the picture of the bike uh, only because it's a local police bike and I just was impressed on, you know, the bike that they have. And, you know, it's a Yamaha nice bike and he was kind enough, he said not to take his picture, but I can still take the picture of the bike, basically. On the left-hand side, you'll see one of the rooms that's there in Sri Lanka, pretty nice. Uh, that's there, very nice, very comfortable. The right hand top picture is that of the lobby of the hotel uh, that we normally take our guests to. This hotel is a very British colonial style architecture. And you still get that old British feeling when you are here. So this is in the open restaurant that's there. You can have your morning breakfast, cup of tea, sip of tea, coffee during the daytime, afternoon time, and relax kind of thing. The right hand bottom picture is that of a Sri Lankan home, and this is their living room. This is the size of the living room. The opposite side from where I actually took the picture on that wall, uh, they have a television. And this is literally all that they have. Uh, in that living room uh, where they stay. Uh, the inside, of course, I did not go, which is a one bedroom. And uh, then they have their kitchen that's there. But when uh, guests are welcomed in, uh, they have the stools. If you see this little small little wooden log, these are small size. Uh, so they have slightly bigger size, which they bring it in uh, and they will sit on these logs while the guests sit on the uh, sofa. 
So this is again taking you back since Sri Lanka is very famous for its tea. Uh, the picture on the left and top will show you some very old ancient teapots that are there. And again, the picture on the left bottom will show you more of the Chinese uh, porcelain kind of teapots that were there and made during that time. So these are all in the tea museum. And I've just put down the different tea grades on the right hand side. But one thing that I want you to notice and see that this is of course in kgs, but I'll just convert it into pounds, that about nine pounds of tea leaves actually get you only two pounds of tea that you buy from the department stores uh, over here. On the left hand side again is one of the uh, pictures from the room itself, from the hotel room. And if you see down below is a nice little seating place also where you can order your drinks, food, and enjoy the entire scenery that's there. The right hand side is some locals, you know, the local life that's there. The vendors and the tuk-tuks that can take you around. Now we do also sometimes include a tuk-tuk ride uh, with our guide. So depending on how adventurous you are. This is in one of the botanical gardens where I am trying to pick a tree from the mountain but of course, using photography tricks that's there. Uh, on the right hand side, you'll find these student monks that do come into this botanical gardens. Uh, the reason they come in is basically for two reasons. One is to understand and learn the different herbs and plant life that's there. And the other is to try and do meditation when there is a crowd of people uh, that do roam around you know, the botanical garden. So their concentration and med meditation kind of thing is how they're able to uh, train their minds. That's there. So like I said, it's time to travel to Dubai and uh, Sri Lanka. And the reason I bring up tea and coffee is many people are just used to drinking tea and coffee uh, on a simple way. Uh, but there's a lot of variations for tea that's there. Can be blended with different spices uh, that's there. And we do also make desserts out of tea, which is a tea uh, panna cotta that's there. In terms of coffee, like I said, again, it can be blended with, uh, you know, different uh, spices, uh, but also we make uh, salad dressing out of coffee. So if anyone does want any of these recipes to try out, I would encourage you to register so that we can share the recipe with you. And of course, we are offering to mail out uh, sample tea bags, uh, you know, that's there uh, for you to taste uh, using the tea with the spice blend uh, that's there with it. So we do encourage you to, you know, kind of, uh, share your uh, details with us so that we can mail this to you or we can email you a couple of recipes with tea and coffee. These are some of the pictures, you know, with our groups that we have traveled or just two people with the guide uh, that's there. So we can do as little as two people and go up to about 12 to 14 in the group. Uh, that's that we try and keep our groups small so that we can take you to these little smaller places into the safari jungles up close and have that experience that's more real as compared to, you know, putting 40, 50 people in a coach. And then all that you get to see is the basic uh, structures from the outside. And that's about it, or just like photo opportunities. We try and give you more of the experience that's there. And that's the reason we keep our group size small and personal. So I'd like you to plan for tomorrow's adventures today and travel with confidence and book with flexibility. So we are flexible in case of any changes that you may need to make on a personal basis or for any other reason, uh, we are able to assist with that also. Now, usually bookings are done 
anywhere from three to nine months in advance so that you get the best possible deals, you get the best possible arrangements that's done and you know get this. This picture is a very old picture when Dubai was still a lot under construction, but that is the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world today. And this is a screen of our contact information, the address, the phone, and the email. Sandy, um, I have a question. What is the travel requirement? If we were to travel, want to travel um, in two months in the summertime, do we need visas? Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? What is the new COVID requirement? Uh, so basically for uh, UAE, you don't, a US passport does not need a visa. You get it on arrival, okay? Uh, Sri Lanka requires an electronic visa that we can help you with uh, uh, getting one. Uh, before you depart. In terms of traveling in the month of August, I would probably stay a little away from that, mainly because Dubai is very, very hot, uh, dry like Las Vegas at 120 degrees or higher. Okay, And Sri Lanka is in the peak monsoon time. So the best time to travel to uh, Sri Lanka and Dubai would be between say mid-September, 15 September, all the way up to about, uh, I would say the first week in April kind of thing. Now, if you go in the September, October month, uh, pricing will be lower. And if you go in the March and April months, pricing will be lower. But if you go December and January, that's because of Christmas and things like that, the pricing goes up because of the holiday season rush. Now, in terms of COVID currently, uh, both Sri Lanka and the UAE don't have restrictions for US travelers to come in. However, in Dubai, you still have to quarantine for 24 hours before you can start the trip. In Sri Lanka, you have to stay with certain approved hotels and uh, the tour operator throughout the entire trip uh, that's there. So that's the current rules. And they keep changing day to day, week to week. And we do get it updated ourselves. And then depending on when our travelers are going, we will inform them. Thank you. Any other questions if anyone wants? I was going to say that I have been to uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai multiple times on vacation. And for anybody that's considering it, I highly recommend it. It's a, they're both unique cities and different than anything else you'll probably see anywhere else in the world. Sri Lanka remains on my bucket list. I haven't done that one yet, but, uh, but I've been to Dubai and Abu Dhabi numerous times. Highly recommend it. Thanks, Keith. Any other questions or? So Sandy, how about the food? Um, is it very spicy? No, not at all, actually. So the uh, Dubai Abu Dhabi spices are very different. They don't have chilies. They do have the local spices, the Arabic spices. Uh, but it's not your spicy red chili hot. Uh, Sri Lanka, if you do northern Sri Lanka, it can get a little spicy. Uh, but most of the hotels cater to the tourist palate. Uh, and most of our meals are breakfast, lunch, and dinner included in Sri Lanka. So... We pretty much know what it is, so they're well informed, uh, the group coming in, and the food is done accordingly. Um, earlier, you, you said that, that you have to stay with the group leader all the time. Um, what happens if you just wanted to take a break and stay in, like, at the hotel? Can, is that allowed or no? 
not under the current circumstances. As of right okay. now, till the COVID restrictions are lifted, uh, the answer is no. Wow. But uh, yes, I mean, earlier, yes, it was all available. You could, you know, be with the group and then stay back uh, a little longer if you wanted to. But as of right now, the answer is no. Thank you. Any more questions? If not, thank you so much for the presentation, Sandy. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Appreciate thank you. Take thank care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.